Elkhorn mine. Jeez, are you alright? What the hell? My leg is stuck. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna pull you out. We have to get you out of there. There you go. Okay. Are you hurt? Can you put any weight on that leg? It's all messed up. Oops, I hit it. It's fine. Just try to stand. Careful. I'm right here. Damn, don't worry. I got you. That leg's in bad shape. Here, let's get you onto the tram. There you go. Now, let's see if this thing has power. Well, okay. There's some luck, right? We should be able to ride this tram right out of the auxiliary exits. If there are any. I think there are. What about Weaver? We'll just find the exit, then figure out what to do from there. That's our first priority. So the controls are over on your side. Let's get moving. Whoa. Whoa. Did you see that? There were totally people there. There they are. Oh my gosh. That is creepy. There they are again. See that? It's like every other flicker. Scarecrows. Ghosts. Hmm. I remember there being more down here. Maybe I missed it. He's always there. Interesting. The turntable, that's what I'm looking for. So this, I gotta remember... I gotta stop it. Okay. So I gotta remember what this looks like. Scarecrow? Canoe? Coffin. Oh, here we are. It's maybe hard to believe, it's hard for me to believe myself, but this whole branch was underwater last I heard. Is it safe? I guess so. Looks like they finally drained it, or maybe just drained off on its own. Water came in pretty fast, and a lot of folks got trapped in the tunnels. I only heard parts of how it went from there. Sanitized for the be bereaved. You know how these big companies are. But there was a gossip too. The trap miners couldn't get the pumps going because the power was rationed, so they shut all the lights off. But even then, it wasn't enough. So I guess it was dark when they... You lost some people down here, didn't you? We all lost people down here. Well, not all of us, but most of us. It doesn't matter now. Look, the old turntable is still wired up. The controls are dead, but I can use my signal generator to switch tracks. 
if the water hasn't damaged it too much. Or we can just keep heading down this tumble tunnel. All this junk hanging up around the turntables from the company store. Just junk, you know. Miners would buy it and use it to decorate the place. Or as landmarks, I guess. I don't know which way to switch down here. It's all so dim and gray. So, we're on the track between the animal bones and the rope boat. I gotta remember that. Because I gotta remember how to get back to here, because that was the exit. But there's more than just the exit. There's, you know, exploration. Pendulum in the casket. So I want to go back and forwards and explore a bit. Okay. Some of this you may have seen if you saw my little absence announcement video. Oh, let's turn this off. There we go. I like the ghosts. It's a neat little effect. I don't know if they're still going to be there or not. I can see something ahead. That's for sure. Hmm. Damn, it's almost totally intact. I thought it would have been destroyed. What is this place? It's a recording studio, basically, kind of thrown together, but... When this mine was active, a couple of folk music archivists spent time here recording minor songs. Really academic, ivory tower types. None of the miners really talked to them much. So they stayed, stayed at the margins, observed, took notes, and then sometimes they'd get someone on a lunch break to see their, into their microphone. Then I guess the power company got, kind of, got some kind of interest in the project and gave the archivists some cold script tokens to pay the miners with their songs. What do you think the archivists were after? Data, I guess? Comparing in, intonation, subject matter, diction. You know, all those little details that no one really thinks about when they listen to music? Yeah. Academics are great at that stuff. Let's get out of here. It seems that exploring extra sections of this game do nothing more than serve the character and the understanding of who you are and who these other characters in the story are. Which is awesome, if you ask me. <laughs> means your understanding of the game deepens the more you explore instead of just getting power-ups and stuff, you know? It's a point-and-click adventure game. A story-driven point-and-click adventure game. Dusty reel real tape player stashed beneath the truck track, loaded with tape but stra starved for power. Okay. Bat feeder and the scarecrow. Let's 
<laughs> Beautiful design. That's the highway. I think that's the zero. Do you hear that? Kind of a muffled rumbling. Maybe we're near the surface? Yeah, it sounds kind of like a highway. I wonder if I stopped digging so abruptly here. Maybe they hit a pipe or something. Hmm. I was curious if we could hear it. I couldn't. Tracks are all messed up here. Tram isn't going any further. I wonder what's down that tunnel. Hmm. All right, let's get back to the surface. They're still there. They are. Oh no, they're not. Oh, they're there. Yep. God. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, okay. I just... That tunnel where the tracks were broken. I'd like to take a look down there. I can be Conway or Shannon here. If you wait for me here, I'll just go take another look around. Sure, okay. I'll be right here. Do I take the light? Oh. Wow. Huh. What the hell is all this? Well, that looks rickety. <laughs> Why am I even here? Cramp shack is lined with wooden shelves. Dusty stacks of tape, reels, the notebook, and notebooks crowd the room. But a bit of moonlight filters through the window near the ceiling. On a small desk in the middle of the room lay three notebooks. The red one is labeled J. Marquez, the green one is labeled R. Marquez, and the blue one is unlabeled. Okay. 
Conway opens the blue notebook, and it's full of Greek letters and cryptic mathematical formulas. Near the back of the book, when f what first looks like it might be an esoteric German shorthand is actually a love poem written in nanograms. The pages are covered in disorganized notes, some written horizontally, and others scribbled vertically into margins. A few pages are lined more evenly and divided up into charts and correlating seasons, lyrics, harmonies, and coal halls. Conway opens the green notebook. On each page is a delicately rendered charcoal drawing. Most are portraits of rugged faces. Near the middle of the book, there are a few drawings of a young girl in a miner's helmet. She plays along the mine cart tracks, collecting pieces of... Oh yeah, this place. These notebooks are labeled Marquez. Your parents are the archivists? No. Weaver's parents are the archivists. My parents are miners. How's the leg? I can walk on it, but it's painful. Oh, I've got some pain cures here that can help you out. I got them from a friend when I sprained my wrist installing a security system. You better let me drive, though. They're pretty they're pretty strong. Yeah, maybe that's best. Don't worry, I've been driving since I was nine. I guess I should look for another route to Dogwood Drive. Yeah, all right. Well, maybe asking Weaver about the zero was the wrong place to start. Maybe we should just ask her for specific directions. Her answers are complicated enough without a layer of indirection at the question. I saw Weaver at my workshop. That's up north by Lake Nolan, right at the Wax and Piona, in the back of a bait shop. Pretty glamorous, right? These are the times we live in. Hmm. She's either up there or back at the farmhouse. Whichever you want to head to first, just let me know. Conway stands solemnly in front of the dog. This old man, this is Shannon. Never had a dog. Dad was allergic. He needed to be able to breathe clearly, at home anyway. Hmm. How's it going, old man? Sorry I left you alone so long. What would you have done if I hadn't come back? It'll be one of us eventually. Oh well. An old hound in a straw hat. Both have seen better days. I said it's antiques. I guess this is your truck? Surprised? It's kind of old. No, I'm not surprised. I guess it's an antique too. I think it suits you. Hmm. Let's see. I can't believe I didn't pass through the, the bait shop because I've been there before on my own without this story section. Where was it? Uh, it's not listed. Okay. I know it's gotta be around here. Wax Road? Bait Shop. There it is. Conway and Shannon pull up to the Bait Shop parking lot. Vaults above the road on a thin steel bar, a handwritten sign reads, Live Bait, Minnows, Small, and Also Large for Stripers. Nightcrawlers, Chips and Beer. Green flyer hangs loosely from a bit of masking tape at eye level. To the shop's right, a drive parking lot sprawls unevenly into grass and then eventually trees. The bait shop is closed. Enter the side door to Shannon's workshop. Conway and Shannon walk around to the side of the building into the workshop. The walls are lined with cheap metal shelves loaded precariously with vacuum tubes, awkwardly shaped metal casings, and coffee cans full of electronic components. Shannon leads Conway to the back of the room, where a few TV sets in various states of disassembly are set up on a rough wooden table. She flips the switch on the power strip they're all plugged into, and the TV sets tremble to life. Conway asks Shannon where she saw Weaver. Shannon points to a small security monitor on the table. The image on the screen is just black, but it seems to be fading slowly, almost 
imperceptibly between different shades of black. Shannon tweaks a few knobs on the side of the monitor, but the picture doesn't change. Conway stares directly at the security monitor, and the screen is a cavernous black. It hums and swells at the, place of, at the pace of the tide. Conway loses track of the workshop's walls. They could be inches away or miles. He's adrift on black water, traveling swiftly toward a rocky shore. There should be a lighthouse or a buoy by these rocks. It's too dangerous. Shannon switches off the power strip. Weaver is not here. To the farmhouse. TV sets staring at them causes my character and probably uh, Shannon's too to uh, kind of blank out. Scene five. Marquez farmhouse. This is going to be a long walk. <laughs> Pardon me while I play Candy Crush while this walk happens. No, I'm just kidding. I'm actually playing 2048. <laughs> Wait. What? Oh, weird. She caught up to me to help. That's very nice of her. Hmm. There's nobody buried here, you know? It's decorative, I guess. Or it's art or something, I don't know. What are the names of the headstones? Norkowski, Padilla, I don't know those names. Maybe the people who lived here before? I know when they bought the property, it already had a house and everything. Or maybe they have some other symbolic meaning. Oh, and look at the headstone, Marquez. I used to think that was for my parents. Now I don't know. Which, the way in which this strange reality is kind of treated as not like crazy is fantastic. That they don't freak out is excellent. Sink. Abandoned spiderweb stretches across the bottom of a saucepan. A skillet is seasoned with dust. So, this is where she was? Yeah, it makes sense. This was where Weaver and her parents lived. They took out a bunch of loans, you know, and had this place built. Do you have any debts? I owe some people some apologies. Well, you're lucky that's all you owe. My parents were like that until the company store found a way to get to them. For my dad, it was tokens to run the fans and air purifiers, but for my mom, it was canaries. Two solutions to the same problem, but they sure sounded different. Weaver had debt, too. A lot of it. All tuition. She said she was a mathematician or something? Yeah, she studied some esoteric stuff about something about using math to translate between Spanish and English. <laughs> I think eventually Weaver put those math skills to work on all the red numbers in the family checkbook and got a clear sense of just how hopeless their situation was. So she left. I guess she just drove away in the middle of the night. They woke up in the morning and the car was gone. Like it was after I spoke to her. Never came back. Until tonight. Someone else told me to come here and talk to her. Huh. Okay, I guess we two aren't the only one she's been talking to. Oh, that's not something you see every day. That old TV right there? Well, that is a damned antique for you. I had a model like that in the shop once, but I had to sell it off to make rent. 
most painful decision I ever made. She answered both questions I would have asked about the TV and about the dude. Say, do you mind if I open it up? Looks like the dials are all corroded, but the screen's leaking light a bit. Come on, I bet Lisette would never forgive you for letting a specimen like that fall into disrepair. Sure. What's gonna happen? Yes. Mmm, that's a good hum. Oh yeah, these tubes are all messed up. Looks like they've been in a swamp or a cave or something. There's moss growing on this one. That's okay, I have a few spares in my bag. Here, I pulled this one out of a computer monitor. It just needs to be recalibrated a bit. Okay, that ought to... Should be seeing something now. Are you seeing anything? Yeah, that looks dangerous. What you're doing there. Damn. Okay. Here, I think the contacts are dirty. Now, don't go s telling my customers I clean off old vacuum tubes with spit. There, just kind of turn it north and south, and... Whoa. She was right. End of Act 1. I needed to find Shannon to detune the TV. So, that was Kentucky Route Zero Act 1. I did that in like less than two hours. I'm actually surprised it was that short. But from what I understand, Act 2 and 3 are still really good. 3, I think, lags a bit. I'm not sure. I don't remember reading the review on that one. Uh, but yeah, Kentucky Route Zero. It's really cool. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be playing more of these.